Hi there everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach and welcome to another one of my album reviews. If you're one of my regular viewers, you will have noticed that I did not do my customary Canadian content review on the multiple of 10. Good reason for it. I forgot. Got overlooked, honestly. I was doing a whole giant slew of reviews in a row, recording them. Like, I think I did like a solid 10 in a row. And I completely blanked on grabbing a Canadian artist because I wasn't paying attention to the re how many reviews I was doing and the, which numbers they were. And I overlooked it. So, I'm going to do something a little extra special. I'm going to do a double shot from Canadian artists. Not just Canadian artists. Local Windsor artists whose albums I bought independently. And this is Falling With Glory, The Cities Will Fall. Now, I own two albums from them. I bought both of them, both of the albums because I worked with Mike here, who's the guitarist. And I like supporting local acts. And at the time, I was really into supporting local acts. I had a fair amount of extra money. So, you know, local bands that played music I was half-ass into asked me if I wanted to buy one of their albums. I'd buy their albums. So, I bought their first album, and the second album came out shortly after. Or I might have even bought the second album first, and then the first album afterwards. I, I don't remember how I picked them up. I had to do a little bit of research, because the band released two albums, and then, unfortunately, I don't remember all the details for behind the scenes or whatnot, but basically the band dissolved. Um, I think one of the guys was... The reality is, is no band will succeed in the city of Windsor. Uh, it, it's, it's a horrible thing to say, but there is a reason why the Tea Party had to leave Windsor to get big. And these guys tried leaving. They went to Winnipeg and Winnipeg's not necessarily what I would have thought of as a great city to go to as either. And it's a real shame because I think if these guys would have went out to either Vancouver so they could work Vancouver, Washington, kind of. I'm going to get into that in a second. Okay, so if they'd gone to Vancouver, if they'd gone to Toronto, or if they'd gone to Montreal, they might have stood a chance. Now, you'd think, well, if you're in Windsor, why don't they just go across to Detroit and play in Detroit? It is so incredibly difficult for Canadian artists, musicians, to get working visas to perform in the U.S. For a Canadian, a Windsor band to just simply cross the border into Detroit, something that takes five seconds to do, basically. Two hours if you get held up at the border. To go play, the amount of paperwork, red tape, forms, all this other stuff that you have to do to get through is absolutely insane. A lot of Canadian, like Windsor musicians, when they go to play over in Detroit, what ends up happening is they go over on a visa saying that they're just part of the road crew, and then they play as the band. It's seriously really... Americans are assholes, Really, when it comes to Canadian musicians going to play in the U.S., Americans are real assholes. Even after Avril Lavigne, Nickelback, Sum 41, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other, that uh, Billy uh, Billy Talent's still more Canadian, I think. But after all those bands kind of exploded at around the same time here in Canada, very few of them got into the U.S. because it's hard to go play the U.S. It's easier to go play everywhere else around the world than it is for Canadians to go play in the U.S. So, this band would suffer from the fact they could not just go simply play in Detroit. It, it, it would Financially, it wouldn't be worth it for them without having a monster following already. And it's hard to build a monster following when you're not playing there. And Windsor really does not support live bands. There, It's been a horror. There's one or two venues in the city that would whine and complain and say, oh, that's not true. We support live music and blah, 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 blah. Original music. There is one bar in the entire city at this moment I know of that supports original 
rock metal style heavier music maybe i don't even think there's one that supports heavier music there's one that definitely supports indie style rock uh there's one that i know does acoustic open mics but don't actually like book real bands in there and the one bar i know that does still actually book bands in and does actually pay bands uh, they don't have a great reputation with the locals because they're not known for really booking the locals so much. And they'll say that they don't book the locals so much because the locals don't really have great music or don't have good enough music. I've seen some of the bands that they book in there and some of the bands that they book in there from other cities are ass compared to this. Just complete ass. So, back to... so. Unfortunately, long story short, because the band was kind of rooted in Windsor and they weren't having success really breaking out of Windsor because they tried, it, they got burned a bit and the band ended up breaking up. Now, this is their first album. This first album, like I said, The Cities Will Fall. It's got six songs on it. It's both of the albums I bought. They're really more EPs. They're not. I'd have to double check the times. I don't have any of the information in front of me. Sorry. Uh, totally independent release, more or less. You can find uh, songs on Spot. I, I want to say Spotify, maybe YouTube. Definitely. There is music out YouTube for sure. I know I saw videos and the songs on YouTube. Uh, and I know there's some other ones that are out there as well. I don't remember the names. I'm, I'm really sorry. Uh, now, the first track on here, uh, track one, intro, is just a little intro piece. It's really cool. I really like it. I really enjoy it. It sets the mood for the album really nicely. Then we go into From the Start. Clever way to kick off the album. Now, right away... There are a couple things I notice with this album musically. And from the intro and from the start, definitely have a little bit of an electronic edge to them. And when I say an electronic edge, I want to say there's notable comparisons musically, sort of, to Rammstein. Sort of. Um... I can see it, especially the last album Rammstein released. Um, but it's not compa it's more comparable to that than it is comparable to, say, Manson or Nine Inch Nails, okay? Uh, it's not industrial. It's just got a bit of an electric edge to some nice, heavy-ass music kind of thing going on. Lyrically, the lyrics aren't bad. I literally was just listening to this right before I came and put it on. I don't listen to this album often, I'm going to be honest with you. And the reason why is the lyrics aren't bad. I like the presentation. I like everything about it musically and whatnot. I'm not into the vocalist himself. The vocalist himself, not my cup of tea. Um... Imagine if Rammstein was fronted by, like, the dude from Blink-182. It's kind of where I want to go with that. that that's kind of what... It, or, um... Oh, the, the other Canadian band. Well, I don't know. Canadian bands, maybe. Is it, maybe it's a Canadian band thing. Simple Plan. Was that who I covered? I think I did a review for a while back there. The no pads, no helmets, no something. The vocalist from that band meets Rammstein. That's that's kind of the vibe on the first two songs. Now, the vocalist sounds the same way the whole way through. Uh, the, the music changes a little bit. It becomes a little less electric, a little more just, you know, hard rock, heavy metal kind of stuff. Um... I can't think of a suitable band to compare it to. It, it definitely has that late 90s industrial kind of edge, but without the electronic industrial part of it. I, I'm not a huge fan of the industrial electrical 
industrial electric elements most of the time. This, I, I like what they do. Uh, from there, we go to Sorry. Um, Sorry is another tune I think is really good. Fight with Honor. Now, I know Fight with Honor is available online for sure. I don't know if that's the one I would have went with. Now, I do like the song. And if you're trying to attract a heavier crowd, it might work. Um, if you're trying to attract a crowd that would be more partial, especially with the type of vocals that are on here. I think Fight With Honor doesn't work the same way. Then you go into Restless Nights. Uh, Restless Nights is good too. I enjoyed Restless Nights. I think Restless Nights would do better maybe as a single. And Crash. Crash I enjoyed too. Uh, it was a good way to close out the album. <sighs> This album, I really think, I think this band in general, if they had come out 10 years earlier. So, um, no, it'd have to be more than, more than 10 years earlier, maybe. Well, this, this says, uh, the copyright on here is 2011. So yeah, I'd say 10 years earlier, 10 years earlier from the 2011 copyright. I, I I would say would have been the perfect time for them. Absolutely. Because they would have had that perfect sound that was coming out of the 90s still music-wise. Still with that heavy, you know, err, not roar, but err, kind of, but good, but good. It, like, commercial, not commercial, but commercial enough. And then... The vocals on top of that, like I said, you got the Blink-182 kind of style vocals on there or the uh, Simple Plan style vocals that are on there. And the, the way that the vocalist sounds. And for me, that doesn't work, but for that was a huge thing. It's a huge thing. So I really think that if this album had come out in 2001 as opposed to 2011, I think it would have done a significantly better. Even if it had come out even no later than 2005, I think it still it still would have been okay. And like what happens to a lot of Canadian bands, they were just the wrong place at the wrong time and it didn't take off the way that it could have. Because as a first album release, at least I believe this is the first album release. I got I hope I'm right on that one. As the first album release, this is a solid first album release. You know, it is... It is just as memorable to me as... Smells Like Children. It is just as, I want to say portrait of an American family, I honestly do. It, it really, portrait of an American family really might be not the best description for this album, but really where I would kind of, in my grand scheme of what I would listen to in music, and I don't listen to portrait that often, uh... I, I think musically, this is better than Portrait of American Family. Uh, the guitar work, Mike's guitar work in here, his solos are good, man. He's got some nice solos. They really, his solos really suit the music. Um, there is definitely musicianship within this band, okay? The the changes, the, the there's some definite progish almost elements. Portrait of an American Family meets Billy Talent's Crisis of Faith. And it's funny that I use those examples because that is kind of the time frame that this sits in between those two albums. Like, I, I really, I hope that people watch this review 
find this album, go listen to it on YouTube or whatever. And then this album and the other album, which I'm going to re- review in the next one. Um, I hope they really kind of pick up for these guys. I hope all of a sudden there's some real notice. There is a Facebook group. The Facebook group only has about 2,000 people on there. Go, go hit like on the Facebook group, guys. You know, bring this band back to life. Seriously. And then what I'd really like to see is bring this band back to life. And then I'd like to see the Tea Party play here in Windsor. And then get Falling With Glory to open up for them. It'd be kind of a weird combination. These guys are a little too heavy to be opening for the Tea Party. But I still want to see that anyways. And, you know, just for fun, you know, maybe have two opening acts and maybe I can get the Howling Odyssey back together. (laughs) All right, folks. So that is it. Falling with glory. Okay. Um, Check them out online. Uh, You might have a hard time trying to buy the album. I like having the album. I, I, I put it in the CD player a couple times. It's pretty good. And, you know, my daughter likes these guys, too. So, you know, my daughter, there's one song, I really can't remember what song it is and which album it's off of, but one of the songs my daughter was a huge fan of. I, to the point where it's because I was working with Mike, I actually got the guitar stuff from Mike to give to her. And then for various reasons, I don't think she ever got it. (laughs) I don't know. Anyways, um, falling with glory, the cities will fall. Check it out. You know, take up maybe a half hour of your time tops. Pretty cool.